Newsflash, Kylie Jenner has only gotten fillers done and her biggest insecurities are her ears. One of the biggest misconceptions about me is that I was like this insecure child and I got so much surgery to change my whole face, which is false. I've only gotten fillers. Oh, you don't realize how you guys always talked about my ears. Yeah, and I'm like, we that me up. The Kardashians are undoubtedly the influencers of the decade. Whatever they wear, trends in fashion. Whatever they eat, trends in diet. Whatever they put on their faces, trends in makeup. Whatever procedures they do or undo, trends in beauty. As iconic personalities with influences over millions and millions of people, one cannot deny their position of power in defining culture. I was just thinking about like the beauty standards in the world today. And although cliche, with great power comes great responsibility. I just feel like we have huge influence and in like, what are we doing with our power? Oh, when something with the title, Kylie Jenner opens up about insecurities trended on my TikTok search. I was just about to applaud Kylie for her vulnerability when she revealed to the world that- You, you don't realize how you guys always talked about my ears. You know, that me up. I always just remember being like the most confident kid in the room. I always loved myself. I still love myself. Car Jenners are getting candid about beauty standards as the cameras roll. Oh, sorry. Was I supposed to be moved with tears? One sec. Let me just grab the wasabi. Oh my God. Now, I don't want to accuse Kylie of anything because we're all insecure about different things. For Kylie could actually be very insecure about her ears, just like how I am insecure about my cheeks. But the claim that she's only had fillers, I've only gotten fillers, I've only gotten fillers, I've only gotten fillers, was later contradicted by herself a week <gasps> later on the show. You know, I got my breasts done before Stormy. So today, let's dive into Kylie's lack of plastic surgery, the stigma around plastic surgery, and if the internet is currently too scared to appear confident, where everyone is trying to claim they are insecure about something to fit in. I will always want everyone to just love themselves. Kylie Jenner, an iconic natural beauty. When I say that Kylie Jenner is a natural beauty, I mean it. All the Kardashians have beautiful natural features and unique body types that complete them as gorgeous women. But growing up in the world of entertainment and having the whole world judge your appearance since childhood is something hard for us to imagine. And something that Kendall and Kylie went through that shaped their identities and worldviews. Like I could be walking down the street doing absolutely nothing and somebody always has something bad to say. Before we look at your book of pictures, can you ask your sister how her meeting was today? We're so excited. Well, don't you want to pay yeah, attention I... to my book like you did to Kendall's? She's just trying to take my shine and that's not even cool. The reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, is an American television series focused on the personal and professional lives of the Kardashian-Jenner family. The series premiered on the E! Cable Network on October 14th, 2007 and ran for 20 seasons over the span of almost 14 years, becoming one of the longest running reality television series in the US. And for Kylie, that meant her entire life has been broadcasted on TV ever since she was nine years old. Having experienced her entire young adulthood in the limelight, the series focused mainly on the sisters, Kim, Kourtney, Khloe Kardashian, and their half sisters, Kendall and Kylie Jenner, as well as parents, Chris and Caitlyn Jenner. Each member of the Kardashians has had their fair share of controversies, but Kylie, as the youngest of the sisters, has faced one of the most backlashes regarding Photoshop incidents and possibilities of plastic surgery. Yes, puberty is real, but to say that everything is natural except for fillers and then a few days after just fillers and breast augmentation is also questionable. Experts in plastic surgery have done multiple analysis on Kylie's face and made several potential 
personal speculations. In addition to the iconic lip fillers, starting with the nose, plastic surgeons point at how it seemed more narrowed on the sides, seen in the decreased volume in the before and after photos, with speculated rotation of the tip upwards and Kylie having shaped down her nose bridge, a potential chin reduction and cheek transformation, with a noticeably smaller chin and her cheeks projecting further outwards from potential cheek implants or cheek fillers, which Kylie admitted, and an enhanced hourglass body shape, which many deemed unrealistic through simply maturing. People have speculated liposuction and BBL lies, but I do believe that puberty and fitness can definitely change the body shape a lot. And it could be a matter of Photoshop instead of surgery. All in all, although Kylie claimed that she is not as insecure as everyone else thinks and that she's only gotten fillers done, a week later, she admitted her breast augmentation while experts speculate more. Honestly, whatever she's done or has not done is nobody else's business. I don't see anything wrong with enhancing beauty with manual technology as long as the individual themselves accept the risk fully. And if that means getting more procedures done, I'm happy for them. The only bone I have to pick is as one of the biggest influencers of the decade who many girls grew up viewing as a beauty icon, making misleading claims and lying about plastic surgery history is going to distort the enhanced beauty as the new normal benchmark. And this has more or less to do with, I think I just see so many young girls on the internet now, like fully editing the shame around unnatural beauty. Not sure when it started, but there seems to be a lot of shaming around women who have this quote unquote unnatural beauty. This is in the form of surgery, Photoshop, and even makeup, where if you don't participate in these activities, you almost feel morally superior. Hence the classic pick me comedies on TikTok capturing the sentiment. Makeup is, it's capitalizing on women's insecurities when it's something that they can easily fix. <laughs> Since you guys won't stop asking, I'm gonna try makeup for the first time. <laughs> if you think about the creation of these unnatural beauties, it's not like turning apples to bananas. It's more like turning apples to candy apples. Kylie Jenner might look different and closer to a specific beauty ideal after procedures and makeup, but her original beauty served as the foundation of that. And just like how some people dye their hair red and some dye their hair pink, it's literally no one else's business. So why is there so much shaming around beauty enhancements to the point that not just celebrities, but common day people feel ashamed shame to the point that they feel a need to hide it as a secret. I hate plastic surgery. I hate like wrinkle reduction things. I hate any type of work you do to your face, any type of plastic surgery. I hate it. I literally hate it so much. It just is destroying our society. <sighs> no, I did not get plastic surgery. <laughs> really? Cause your nose looks different. Oh, not your bell, never been under the knife. At least it's what I tell them. I swear on my life. Well, there are several potential reasons why people shame plastic surgery patients. First is actually jealousy. You know what's waiting for you on the other side of being pretty and hot? Jealousy and envy. A person may be jealous that the other individual suddenly looks and feels better, whereas they may still feel unhappy in their own body or mindset. Second is societal pressure. Society has crafted the narrative that cosmetic surgery is is quote unquote bad and people who get cosmetic surgery are shallow and vain and caring about your appearance is superficial. But I like to say that it is only true to a certain extent. For us humans, we are wired to be visual creatures and base a lot of our judgments on appearances. So heck, it is not a sin to want to improve our appearances and be more attractive. The tricky part is how much should we care? Third is body positivity. Ironically, the movement that encourages people to love their bodies has also led to shame for those who use surgery to be more. This stirs up the whole conversation and debate about self-acceptance versus self-improvement all over again. Is cosmetic surgery or even makeup just against body positivity and body acceptance? Or could they be viewed as healthy measures to improve one's self-image? 
is no right or wrong answer as it really just depends on the person. But my take is it all depends on the intention. Are you going under the knife and taking all the risk associated with helping improve your self-image and gaining confidence and leaning closer toward the better you you envision for yourself? Or is it because everyone else is having a certain look? Like the Kylie lips or the Barbie nose and you are craving the validation to look quote unquote standard pretty? At the end of the day, I don't think anyone has a right to judge how a person chooses to enhance their appearance for they are the sole benefactors and the risk taker for making that decision. As long as they are honest with themselves about it. Because the more we try to make it a taboo topic and have less and less transparency about it, the more scared people are to be transparent about their own choices. Which I do give TikTok credit for. For there are now a lot more open discussions about people's personal experiences with transforming their appearances. But that obviously comes with its own set of issues where there's a potential of glorifying the experience. You got lipo for what? You've always been so skinny I can't with these TikTokers anymore. What if Kennedy didn't feel skinny? What if there was something about her body that you might have deemed fine, but she herself, the person who's living in that body, did not like? If she has the funds and the means to fix that about herself and that's going to make her happier in the long run, why are you bothered? But speaking of TikTok and just social media in general, <laughs> tying back to the Kylie insecurity talk, there seems to be an overall fear of appearing too confident publicly. The insecurity overflow. Vulnerability is undoubtedly the building block of trust and honesty. It is what makes social media a beautiful place where people can build real connections. Yet that in nowadays seems to get abused sometimes where some vulnerability shared on the internet seem to lack genuineness, where they're shared just for the purpose of sharing. I received it as like everyone's making fun of everyone's. my ears, calling me dopey. I? Everyone so pulled, we would call her like little dopey. dopey. Oh, as like a little kid. And yeah, I'm like, we never... that <laughs> me up. Yeah, you never think about I it. I never thought about my ears. And then yeah. for like five years, I never wore an updo. Again, I'm not saying that Kylie is not genuine for anything could be an insecurity. But when considering the years and the rest of the alleged surgeries she's gotten for this impressive glow up, I don't know how accurate it is to call her ears her biggest insecurities ever. But overall, as someone who doesn't even keep up with the Kardashians, I find this conversation refreshing and heartwarming, especially with Chloe opening up about her struggles with body image where she felt the immense pressure from her family and the harsh audiences. Even though we sometimes blame the Kardashians for spreading unrealistic beauty standards, I think as audiences, we are also responsible for the feedback loops we create. For if we don't praise a humanly impossible hourglass slim thick body, perhaps less celebrities, thus less women, will go through procedures like BBL. If we were just more kind with women and men who are bold enough to wear whatever they want, even if that doesn't quote unquote fit their body types, skinny or curvy, everyone will feel less pressure to fit into this one single size. And I think Chloe summarized this really well in her experience. I've been torn apart the minute that I've gone on TV. I didn't look like my sisters, so therefore it's not good enough. And then when I started whatever changing my look, you get better makeup, you do fillers, you do whatever. I had a nose job and there's still people constantly bullying you. It's like, so which one is it? You didn't like me then, you don't like me. Like I, you have to do things for yourself. And I can relate to this on a personal level because when I gained and lost a bunch of weight, there are always people commenting on my body saying I was either too fat or too skinny. There is absolutely no way to please everyone. As long as you are pleased with your own state, that's what truly really matters. For no one can take that self-assurance from you. And that brings up the last point I want to touch on. I would say to be very honest, when Kylie said that she was very confident and very secure since she was a child, my first reaction was to doubt it. And then I asked myself, like, why do I do that? It's interesting how at some point, it became almost non-socially acceptable to straight up claim ourselves as confident, especially as women, where humbleness is the status quo and confidence is seen as this egotistical delusion. I would say as humans, everyone has insecurities as the foundation of human nature. I think the biggest misconception about confidence is due to the self-centeredness of social media today, where everything and everyone is 
screaming, look at me, pay attention to me, praise me. It is so easy to mix up confidence with arrogance. Confidence is characterized by a sense of self-assurance, a belief in one's abilities and the willingness to take risks. On the other hand, arrogance is characterized by a sense of superiority, a lack of empathy, and the tendency to dismiss anyone else's opinions. So if true confidence is built on empathy and real self-assurance, I don't see why it's undesirable to proudly show that online and offline. The pressure in the current hypersensitive pop culture to only talk about your flaws, to only share an overflowing of some performative and some genuine vulnerability could get tiring. Genuine confidence, not arrogance, is neither toxic nor a flex. It's a great source of energy that inspires and motivates those in close proximity and is underrated in today's culture. And that's just my two cents about how our culture has become overly sensitive to offending people with confidence. I'm still a believer that great moments are better when shared and great accomplishments are better celebrated when done together. So don't forget to share something you're proud of with our community. And if you like this video, share it with someone you love. Subscribe for more commentaries and videos on personal growth. And I will see you next week.